Hi, I'm Sheila Durkin. And I'm Linda Bidoff. And we're members of your Alameda League Youth Outreach Group. We're sorry that we can't be here with you today, but we did want to show you the latest version of Verify It, our fun, free educational game that teaches about civics, voting rights, and news literacy. So today what we'd like to do is show you the game, tell how it was developed, and explain how you might use it with your friends. Linda, let's show everyone how it works. When you enter the link verifyit.buzz, it will take you to the landing page where you can choose what type of game you'd like to play, either single or multiplayer. We're going to use the multiplayer version so you can play with friends. We created a small four question game for demo purposes today. So I'm going to say, let's click on the I'm the Game Runner. And that's going to give us a list of all the games that we can choose from. And if you look at the bottom in the voting category, they're voting by state games that are state-specific games that were developed in the first version of the game before the November election to address some of the voting issues in those states. So we're going to go back and choose the demo game for today, which is under the League of Women Voters demo. That's the game choice, and then we're going to start the new game. It'll take us to this page, when, if you're the game host, where it will give you the game code that you can give to the other players in the game. <clears throat> and then they enter their game, their name and the game code, and they're ready to play. As they enter the game, when you have multiple players, you'll see their names appear on the list so that you can see who's playing and how they're doing. So if you enter your name and sign in and start the demo, which we will do right now, we're going to sign into the game. This is an example of a news question in that category, and this is a story about misinformation and how it's used. The fact that six officers have died in the last 10 days is a true statement, but it adds the misinformation that somehow this wasn't important enough to cover in the media. Now, if we click on the headline at the top, it's going to show us the source, which is Facebook, and let's assume that we consider this a false claim. And let's get to the story behind the post and a link to the article that analyzed the post, underlined in blue, which will give us the true story about the officer's deaths. And if we go back and click on the media that explained the story, we get a, we get a box that pops up that gives us the description as well as a rating of the media. We think this is a critical component of the game because it gives the factual reporting and bias, left, right, or center, of the publication, the website, or the online social media platform that's being used. So if we go to the next question, this is one about voting, and we included several uh, questions around the voting category. Since this is often uh, a question that's a source of confusion, I'm going to choose the true answer. So since that's incorrect, we'll choose false and look at the explanation. And while we do that, we're going to look at this underlined word that says provisional ballot. That also pops up a box, and this is what we call a hint in the game. It gives us an example of words or phrases or terms that, that might be a source of confusion. And if we go to any of these underlined um, links, it'll take us to the California Secretary of State website where we can find rules about voting, voting rights, and ballot status. The next question, <clears throat> excuse me, is one that we call fun facts. And this is something that we've included in the game <clears throat> as an example of misinformation in the days of the Roman Empire. Again, you'll see that there are hints that are underlined that will give you definitions of those words. And if we choose true and go to the explanation under read the story here, It'll actually give us a very detailed explanation on the topic of misinformation and an interesting example of its effects. If we go back to check the source, we can see that it came from The Conversation, a website rated high for factual reporting and least bias. And if we click on the yellow type at the end of the explanation, it will actually show a rating 
and more information about that particular media. So our last question is about the census. And this is an example of the civics category. I know that um, even though there was some confusion about this, as leaguers, we all know that this answer is every resident in the United States that's, that's counted. And if we go to the explanation, clicking on the first one takes you to the actual wording. And the second will take you to the link for census.gov to learn more about the subject. So that's our short demo of the, of the game. And after the last question, we have a page that shows the score. Pretty good job. <laughs> and if we go back to the teacher or the game runner or the game host page, that'll give you an idea of how other people did in the game. So that's how the game works. Hopefully an incentive to try it for yourself. And now we'll tell you a little bit about the development. Thanks, Sheila. Uh, so here again is the URL, verifyit.buzz. And if you want to take a look at our slideshow presentation, you can also do that by putting verifyit.buzz slash slides slash Alameda. Uh, by the time you see this, we also hope that the entire presentation will be uploaded to the uh, League of Women Voters Alameda website and hopefully on our YouTube channel. So our goal in creating this game is to teach young and future voters to become informed citizens and effective participants in our democracy. We wanted to do it by focusing on three areas, news literacy, teaching them how to determine if, if what they read, hear, or see is accurate. Um, that we wanted to teach them about civics and civic participation, because how do you know how to participate and keep your democracy if you don't know the principles behind it as well as its history? Uh, we're looking at things like petitioning the government, working on issues for candidates, and the League of Women Voters. And then finally, we wanted to look at voting. How do you register and how do you vote? What are the rules? All right, let me tell you a little bit about the history of the game. Uh, we released version one in the fall of 2020. Uh, this was uh, a long time coming. Uh, we worked on it for over a year. It was a very a uh, simple single player game with true false questions. We did include uh, 30 plus questions on voting for both California and the swing states. We tested um, an in-person game show first uh, at a high school, a community college, and also an after school program. And then we realized it actually worked better as an online game. So we recruited a software engineer and tested it out at Alameda and Encinal high schools. We got great feedback. We found out that everybody loved it, not just uh, youth, but also seniors. And we had over 3,200 games played uh, in the three month period from the September to December of 2020. So now that we had a little bit of time after the election, uh, we started working on version two, which is what Sheila demonstrated for you. We released it on May 1st, specifically for Law Day. Um, and now you see we do have two games, uh, both the single player game as well as the multiplayer game. This multiplayer game was designed uh, specifically for teachers and other presenters to use as an icebreaker to engage students and spark dis discussion about civics and voting and news literacy, but it's also fun for you all to use to play with your friends. We expanded the categories to uh, include all sorts of different uh, uh, topics that are uh, legal women voter priority issues. We now added uh, multiple games. There's more than 45 and we have more than 800 questions and we update them each week to try to keep them current. So the other thing that we did, which we're really proud of, is that we engaged uh, a few other nonprofit, nonpartisan partners uh, that have a nationwide presence. The first is the American Constitution Society, and they run a Constitution in the Classroom program where they send lawyers into classrooms on Law Day, which is May 1st, and also Constitution Day, which this year will be September 17th. Um, we also partnered with Wolfpack, which is a nonprofit dedicated to getting money out of politics. 
uh, Douglas Day, who's a local professor of politics, the civiccenter.org, which is focused on voter registration of high school students, and the Alameda County Education Department. Um, we're really pleased that the History and Social Science Coordinator is promoting our game. Um, our partners are doing a number of different things. They're helping us write questions in their subject areas, incorporating the game on their websites, uh, communications and social media, and using the game as an icebreaker in school presentation. Our goal is to have this introduced into the schools in the fall, uh, as well as to establish more partnerships. So you too can use the game and also help us distribute it. Uh, we hope that you'll all go and play the game at verify.buzz with yourself and your friends and families, that you post the link on your social media accounts, and most importantly, that you introduce the game to all the teachers, educators, and administrators you know. That's one of the most difficult things is to find people in the schools that can help us uh, introduce the game. It would also be great if you would send the link to your community, for example, clubs and organizations that you belong to that are interested in civics education, any judges or bar associations, as well as to your friends, your family, and your colleagues, and do it nationwide. We currently have voting questions for 10 different states, as well as in any state category. We plan to write questions for all 52 states in the future. If you want to help with the game, we are always looking for people to write questions, to research voting laws, to make sure that the game is current, particularly today when states are rapidly changing uh, their voting requirements, and also to update our social media sites. So here's all of our links. Uh, you can like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and here's our contact information. Uh, as well as another link to the slides. Thanks for listening and have fun playing Verify It.